Soil provides the plants with nutrients. It acts as a medium for storage as well as supply of water and mechanical support to the roots. Therefore, the physical and chemical properties of soil are vital in influencing plant growth. Soil texture is the property that describes the relative proportion of mineral particles called soil separates namely sand, silt and clay. Infiltration depends among other things on soil texture. The fill capacity and permanent wilting point determine the water availability to plants. Hydraulic conductivity is a measure of the ease with which water movement in soil occurs. Electrical conductivity is a measure of the soluble salts in the soil sample or irrigation water. The pH value of a soil sample or natural water is a measure of its alkinity or acidity. It determines the hydrogen ion concentration. The determination of these properties will be described. Soil texture is a permanent feature of a given soil. It influences both water retention and transmission characteristics as well as tillability and erosiveness of the soil. For routine textural estimations in the laboratory, the Biocus hydrometer method is commonly used. The apparatus required are The estimation of texture by mechanical analysis is based on dispersion and sedimentation. Dispersion refers to the separation of individual soil particles and is achieved by chemical and mechanical means. Mechanical stirring disperses larger aggregates while chemical dispersion through sodium hexametaphosphate is required for small aggregated clay groups. Sedimentation refers to the settling rates of dispersed particles in water, which is a function of particle size and is governed by Stokes law. The settling velocity is proportional to the square of the radius of the particle, so that the sand particles settle down faster. A hydrometer is used to determine the density of suspension at any given time, hence the amount of material in suspension. Biocas determined that after 40 seconds, the hydrometer reading is not affected by sand sized particles of size 0 0.05 millimeter and larger. This reading gives silt and clay content. After 2 hours, the particles of sizes less than 0 0.002 millimeter are left in suspension. This reading gives the clay content. The steps are described. Weigh 50 grams woven dried soil sample and add 100 milliliters of 5 percent sodium hexametaphosphate solution. The suspension can be left overnight. The suspension is transferred to the dispersion cup and water added up to 500 cc. The dispersion cup is transferred to the stirrer and stirred for 10 minutes. The suspension is transferred into a cylinder.
water is added up to the 1 liter mark. The settling is stirred. And the time recorded. The hydrometer is gradually inserted into the cylinder. and the reading taken exactly after 40 seconds. This reading gives the silt and clay content. Temperature of the suspension is also recorded to correct the hydrometer reading. The suspension is stirred vigorously and again placed on a table where it will not be disturbed. The hydrometer reading is now taken after two hours. The sand, silt and clay composition is calculated in percent and the texture determined using the United States Department of Agricultural Textural Triangle. Infiltration depends on soil texture and the amount of water present in the soil. The process of entry of water into the soil through the soil surface is called infiltration. The infiltration rate of a soil is a measure of its capacity to absorb or take in water applied at the surface. Initially, the rate at which water enters the soil is very high. It decreases with the time until a relatively constant value is attained. This is generally referred to as the basic infiltration rate. The apparatus required are ring infiltrometer, a cylinder of larger diameter, a hammer, a needle mounted on a carrier. Infiltration is generally determined in the field using the ring infiltrometer. The ground is prepared first by clearing any vegetative growth and leveling. To minimize the effect of lateral spreading of water, a buffer pond can be created by driving a larger diameter metal ring concentric with the ring infiltrometer. The concentricity is checked with a ruler at several places. The metal rings are hammered into the soil vertically downwards to about 8 to 10 centimeters below the ground level. The use of two concentric metal rings to determine the infiltration characteristics is referred to as the double ring infiltrometer method. Before water is applied initially, a piece of plastic or polythene is placed inside the ring to prevent any disturbance or crushing of the soil surface. Water is poured into the ring. The sheet is removed subsequently. Water is maintained in the buffer pond at about the same depth as inside the ring. Data are obtained by measuring the depth of ponded water at measured time intervals.
the level of water in the ring is maintained at 6 to 8 centimeters or the depth of water generally existing during application of irrigation water. Observations are taken periodically. The cumulative infiltration rate can be expressed as C is equal to A T to the power of N plus B into T, where A, N and B are constants determined empirically and T is the time. The infiltration rate is given by I is equal to D C upon D T is equal to A N T to the power of N minus 1 plus B. The infiltration rate is usually a few centimeters per day. For given porosity and pore size distribution, the amount of water held in the soil depends on the capillary pressure of the water in the soil. Two regions of the curve between the water held and the capillary tension are of particular interest to agriculturists. These are field capacity and permanent wilting point as they represent the upper and lower limits of water availability to plants respectively. A representative bare plot is leveled properly and bonded to a height of 30 centimeters. The soil profile is fully wetted up to at least 30 centimeters below the proposed maximum sampling depth by ponding it with water continuously. Immediately after the ponding is over, the plot is covered with a polythene sheet and or mulch to reduce the evaporation losses. Moisture content samples are taken at various depths gravimetrically every 24 hours until the moisture contents at successive samplings agree to within 1 percent at each depth. The final moisture contents represent the field capacity values.
permanent wilting point is considered equivalent to the water held by the soil against a pressure of 15 bars. It is generally estimated in the laboratory by using either a pressure plate or a pressure membrane. The apparatus required are ceramic plate, pressure membrane, rubber rings to contain samples and compressors. The samples are placed over a ceramic plate or cellulose membrane. Soil samples disturbed or undisturbed are initially saturated. Compressed air is then forced into the chamber called the extractor. The pressure of compressed air is measured by a mercury manometer or by a pressure gauge. Pressure is maintained at 15 bars until the flow of water ceases. That is to say the soil is in equilibrium with the applied pressure. Hmm. The moisture content is then estimated gravimetrically as in the case of the measurement of water content. The same apparatus can also be used to estimate the field capacity by applying a pressure of one third bar per clay soils and 0.1 to 0.2 bar per sandy to sandy loam soils. The same apparatus can be used to determine the moisture content at various pressures ranging from 1 tenth to 15 bars, thus obtaining the moisture characteristic curves for various soil types. Hydraulic conductivity under saturated conditions is a dynamic property governed by Darcy's law. Hydraulic conductivity depends not only on porosity, but also primarily on the sizes of the pores in addition to the fluid properties such as density and viscosity. Hydraulic conductivity can be easily determined in the laboratory by using constant head method for soils having high values of hydraulic conductivity, example coarse textured soil such as sandy loam. The undisturbed core samples are brought to the laboratory. The sample is saturated with water. And is mounted on a stand. The cross sectional area and the length of the sample are measured. A constant head is maintained at the soil surface. Water is allowed to flow through the sample and the volume of water is collected over a time interval until the measured outflow attains a constant value. The hydraulic conductivity is calculated by K is equal to B upon A 
T i, where B is the volume of water collected in cubic centimeters in a time interval of T seconds, A is the cross sectional area of the sample, I is the hydraulic gradient maintained and K is the hydraulic conductivity. Since the flow rates of fine textured soils such as clay are very slow, the falling head method is generally used. In this table, the hydraulic conductivity of different materials are given. Gravel 150 to 450 meters per day, sand 2.5 to 45 meters per day, silt 0 0.08 meters per day, clay 0 0.0002 meters per day. Electrical conductivity is a method to determine soil salinity. Salts present in the soils cause direct injury to growing plants. Salinity controls the availability of soil moisture and plant nutrients. Evaluation of salt status of soils or salinity will help in making appropriate application of additional irrigation water for removal of excess salts and selection of suitable crops. The concentration of these salts is quantitatively measured in terms of the electrical conductivity of the soil solution. The apparatus required are air dried soil sample. 100 milliliter beaker, balance, EC meter and thermometer. 20 grams of air dried soil is weighed and kept in a 100 milliliter beaker. 40 milliliters of distilled water is added to the beaker containing soil. The suspension is stirred for 30 minutes. The soil water suspension is filtered. The temperature of the filtered solution is noted. The cell is inserted into the solution and the temperature of the EC meter adjusted. The pH value is an index of soil reaction and is a measure of its acidity or alkinity. Its determination is important for establishing soil reclamation technology. The apparatus required are air dry soil, 100 milliliter beaker, pH meter and buffer solutions. 20 grams of air dry soil is weighed into a 100 milliliter beaker. To this, 40 milliliters of distilled water is added, occasionally stirring the solution. The pH meter is calibrated using the standard buffer solutions of pH 4, 7 and 9.2. The pH electrode is then inserted into the suspension after stirring and the pH value recorded. The properties discussed here together determine water retention, water availability to plants, water movement, 
salinity and alkalinity or acidity. These properties determine the choice of crops and the soil reclamation procedures to be adopted. Thank you.